Okay, let's talk about rationalizing the denominator. This is a very popular thing to do in algebra, and there's a reason for it. And just to remind you, there are a few things that your math teacher does not like. One of them is a zero in the denominator. Another one is a negative and a radical. Another one is a fraction and a fraction. But this one, a radical in the denominator, makes your math teacher sad. Okay, so let's not make our math teacher sad. We don't want radicals in the denominator. And there is a way to get rid of them. It's called rationalizing the denominator. And let's see it done. Here are some example problems. And remember, if we don't have an equation, if there's no equal sign, the only way that you can change a fraction is by multiplying numerator and denominator by the same thing. Okay, if this is the same as this, then you're not changing the value, you're just changing the way that it looks. So, you might ask yourself, what would I need to multiply this square root of 2 by to make sure there's nothing left in the radical? And the answer is square root of 2. Now, if I multiply the denominator times square root of 2, I need to multiply the numerator because I don't want to change the value just the way that it looks. Okay, now why did I do that? Well, when you go to multiply now, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. And look at that. No more radicals in the denominator. Okay, now let's see what happens to the numerator. The numerator is going to be square root of 5 times square root of 2, and that gives me the square root of 10, which cannot be simplified, and I'm done. Okay, and remember, I'm happy because now no more radical in the denominator. Bing! All right. Now let's look at this one down here. Okay, now I have a radical in the denominator, but this one's different because in the denominator, it looks like a binomial. So I can't just multiply by what the radical was. To get rid of this, what I need to multiply by is I need to multiply by the conjugate. You remember what the conjugate is? Okay, the math cousin. Conjugates look the same, but the sign in the middle is different. So for this problem, what I need to multiply by is I'm going to need to multiply by square root of x plus 3 over the square root of x plus 3. Okay, it has to be the same thing with the numerator and the denominator. And when I multiply this denominator now, I will need to FOIL. Okay, let's see it now. The numerator is just going to be 5 times the square root of x plus 3. And I don't necessarily need to distribute the numerator, but I do need to distribute the no denominator to see how that radical goes away. Now, to do the denominator, I'm going to FOIL. Okay, the first two. Square root of x times square root of x. Square root of x times square root of x is just x. No more radical. That's the first two. Let's do the outer two. The outer two is square root of x times 3. All right, and it's positive, so that's plus 3 square roots of x. Now let's do the inner two. The inner two is minus 3 times square root of x. Oh, look at that. Look at this. These two will cancel out. Okay, and then let's do the last two. The last two is negative 3 times 3, which is going to be a minus 9. Okay, so you see how these middle two now will cancel out? You know when you multiply conjugates, the middle two cancel out. So this one cancels with this one. Plus 3 square roots of x minus 3 square roots of x is 0 square roots of x. And now my answer is going to be 5 square root of x plus 3 over x minus 9. And you can stop right here, okay? You don't need to distribute out the numerator. The reason that we did this is because now I have... Bing! 
and that makes your math teacher happy. So remember, if you see a radical in the denominator and it's just one term, you're going to multiply by the same thing. If you see a radical in the denominator that is two terms, you're going to multiply by the conjugate.